Hello everyone, and welcome to my The Bold and the Beautiful official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. According to The Bold and the Beautiful teasers, Poppy Nozawa has been visiting Forrester Creations from time to time to spend time with her daughter, Luna Nozawa. That could lead to Poppy meeting someone attractive and experiencing some flying sparks. Carter Walton has been engaging with Luna recently over the Eric Forrester problem, thus Poppy may easily overhear them discussing. Poppy could easily become attracted to Carter, and she might even begin to question if he's single. Of course, B&B &B fans are aware that Carter is currently connected with Katie Logan. Katie turned over the chance to rejoin with serial cheater Bill in favor of Carter's dedication. Carter, on the other hand, has demonstrated his ability to be disloyal in the right conditions. Carter assisted Quinn Fuller cheat on her husband since he views Eric to be a nice friend and father figure. Carter wants to be a nice man, but there are moments when he follows his heart and causes others to suffer. This may be one of those occasions when Carter falls for Poppy and betrays Katie. It could begin innocently enough if Carter simply wants to make Luna's mother feel welcome. Carter may try to be sociable and unintentionally fall for Poppy's attractiveness as well as her charm. May Katie find herself in similar territory, worrying that Carter may cheat on her next. Katie's previous fears may resurface, leaving her fearful that her heart may be destroyed once more. Bill clearly crushed Katie's heart on multiple occasions, but he's not the only man on canvas who can do it. If Carter strays and leaves Katie feeling rejected, he may not live up to the hype in Katie's view. According to the bold and the beautiful spoilers, Katie and Carter may have to amend their love status if things go south, so stay tuned for more information on this couple's fate. Donna entered Eric's room as Eric's relatives smiled at Eric's blinking eyes. Brooke had the impression that Eric was attentive and prepared. Finn and Bridget informed Eric that they needed to take action to prevent infection. Finn stated that Eric could breathe on his own. But will he? Bridget inquired. Bridget called the family to let them know that the respiratory specialist was on her way up. Finn and Bridget informed Donna that Eric was prepared and that it was now time to reduce Eric's risk of infection. Finn claimed that machines were required, although Eric would have appreciated having them. Finn pleaded with his family not to give up. Ridge stated that no one had given hope and that they would pray for a Christmas miracle. The specialists later met with the family, but Donna stated that there was no certainty Eric would be able to breathe on his own. Eric, Brooke was confident, wanted to stay and would struggle and breathe. Finn informed Eric that while Finn and Bridget will remove the ventilator, Eric would have to do his part and breathe. Bridget said Eric heard them because his eyes flickered beneath his eyelids. Ridge believed it was too crucial to speculate on. You want this too out of your mouth or not? Ridge inquired of his father. Eric moved a little, but his eyes remained closed. That was seen as confirmation by his relatives. Finn and Bridget took their time removing the tube. The monitors began to bleep. Bridget and Finn became terrified and began CPR. Brooke took up Stephanie's Bible and read the highlighted paragraph about the Lord's release from the dead once more. Eric was engulfed in a white light. After a few moments of calm, Eric exclaimed, as if he had emerged from the ocean. Eric was struggling to breathe, and Donna yelled out that he needed assistance. It was typical, according to Finn and Bridget, and Eric's body understood what to do. Eric continued to struggle to breathe, and then his eyes slowly opened. Finn asked Eric to concentrate and give them a signal. Eric clasped Donna's hand, while the entire family laughed, sobbed, and hugged. Eric was welcomed home by Brooke. Katie, Zen, Luna, and RG were at Eric's house working on Donna's request to fill the estate with festive cheer. Zen said they were trying their best without Eric as they decorated the tree. RG took Eric's carousal into the house, wondering if Eric would ever see decorations again. Luna mentioned that it was the season for miracles, and Katie speculated that it could be the push Eric needed to return to them. Zend hoped Katie was correct, 
because the holiday didn't feel the same without Eric. RJ and Katie discussed Eric's piano playing and his lethal eggnog. They joked about taking it to the hospital and whiffing it on Eric. Zender hoped that Christmas would not become a sorrowful anniversary of the family's loss of the guy who had held the family together. Katie suggested they harness the power of positive thinking to send positive ideas to Eric. Zend agreed to the concept and stated they could do it by sharing memories of Eric's awesomeness. Zend claimed to have won the adoption lottery when it came to heartwarming families. Eric must have thought Kristen and Tony were insane to adopt right after their honeymoon, but Eric had always made Zend feel loved and as much a forester as anybody else in the family. Zender remembered Eric being friendly and allowing him to stay at the estate when he returned from Europe. Eric, according to Zend, always knew what to say and how to make people feel better. Katie stated that Eric would keep doing it because he was not going anywhere. RJ later pulled out the family photos and Luna hoped to see embarrassing childhood photos of him. Katie discovered a photo of Eric in a bikini with the Logan girls. She couldn't believe Stephanie had let him keep it, and she thought about how much Eric meant to her family. Katie stated that Eric was a miracle to others and deserved his own. RJ started playing the piano. Luna sat behind him as he sang Oh Holy Night. Brooke dialed Katie's number and requested that she be placed on speakerphone. Brooke informed the group that the doctors had removed Eric's ventilator and he was now breathing on his own. She assured them that it was their miracle and that they would have a Merry Christmas after all. Katie, RJ, Zend and Luna cried and hugged each other after the phone call. They wanted to celebrate, so they sang along to RJ's rendition of Joy to the World. The family gathered around Eric at the hospital. Brooke informed Ridge that she had informed Thorn, Hope and Katie of the news. Brooke stated that they could truly enjoy the holidays. Donna informed Eric that Finn and Bridget had saved him, and Steffi informed Eric that Finn had discovered a means to heal Eric. Ridge noted that he had intended to follow Eric's pledge, but Ridge was pleased that they had chosen Finn's alternative. Ridge requested that Eric say something. RJ and Katie discussed Eric's piano playing and his lethal eggnog. They joked about taking it to the hospital and whiffing it on Eric, Zender hoped that Christmas would not become a sorrowful anniversary of the family's loss of the guy who had held the family together. Katie suggested they harness the power of positive thinking to send positive ideas to Eric. Zend agreed to the concept and stated they could do it by sharing memories of Eric's awesomeness. Zend claimed to have won the adoption lottery when it came to heartwarming families. Eric must have fought Kristen and Tony were insane to adopt right after their honeymoon, but Eric had always made Zend feel loved and as much a forester as anybody else in the family. Eric fixed his focus on them all. Ma, Mary, muttered he. The family wished Eric a Merry Christmas while crying. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.